This is the presentation for incorporating causal graphical prior knowledge into predictive modeling via simple data augmentation. Presented by Takeshi Tashima and Masashi Sugiyama. In this work, we propose a general data augmentation method to incorporate the prior knowledge of causal graphs into predictive modeling. To explain the problem setup, we need to first introduce the notion of causal graphs. Causal graphs are compact representations of the knowledge of the data generating processes behind the data distributions. They encode the cause effect relations among the variables, where a directed edge is drawn from variable A to B if A is the direct cause of B. Based on this semantic understanding, a causal graph may be obtained from the domain knowledge by encoding the data generating process. When a causal graph is available, for example obtained from domain experts, we can infer the conditional independence relations that should hold in the data distribution. For example, if we have a causal graph that looks like the one at the top, indicating y causes x1 and y causes x2, then this graph implies the conditional independence statement that x1 and x2 are independent given y. In this work, we consider how to directly use such knowledge of the data distribution in predictive modeling. More specifically, in this work, we consider acyclic directed mixed graphs, or ADMGs for short. ADMGs are graphs with directed edges, and bi-directed edges, and they are assumed to have no directed cycles. They are used to describe the causal graphical models with latent variables. As described at the bottom of this slide, if a causal graph that is an ADMG is given, it implies a certain factorization structure of the data distribution which is known as the topological ADMG factorization. We leverage this fact to derive the proposed method, when the causal graph is more complicated, than the one at the top of this slide. As a basic setup, we consider random variables x and y, and we consider predicting y from x. The joint vector of x and y is denoted by z, when we do not distinguish which variables were x and which one was y. And in this work, we will assume that the data distribution obeys some causal graph, and that we are given an estimated causal graph. Technically, we assume that the joint data distribution, P, satisfies the topological ADMG factorization with respect to the ground truth ADMG, denoted by the curly G. What we are given in the problem are, the joint data of X and Y, which is an IID sample from the underlying distribution P, and the G hat, which is an ADMG that is an estimator of the ground truth curly G. Then, the goal here, is to find a predictor, f, for which the expected prediction error is small. We describe the key idea of the proposed method in this trivariate example. Let's consider, for example, the case that we are predicting y from x1 and x2. And we assume that we know that the data distribution follows this causal graph. In this case, we can infer that x1 and x2 are conditionally independent given y. To use this knowledge, our simple idea is to shuffle the values of x1 and x2, while conditioning on y, in the training data. That is, we can group the data based on the value of y, and in each group, we take all combinations of x1 and x2. This procedure reflects the knowledge that x1 and x2 are independent given y. In this example, the causal graph is simple and involves only three variables. The question is how to derive such data augmentation procedures for more general ADMGs. To derive the method for more general ADMGs, we take advantage of the topological ADMG factorization. First, we rewrite the joint distribution by the ADMG factorization. It describes the joint density as a product of d different conditional densities. Then, we approximate each conditional density in this factorization by a kernel-based empirical conditional density, as in the middle equation. Finally, we plug this approximated joint density into the definition of the risk functional, to obtain a risk estimator that can be computed from the data. By recursively computing the integral while resolving Dirac's delta, this risk estimator takes the form of a weighted sum. We will explain this form in detail in the next slide. This expression, in fact, represents a data augmentation procedure. The plug-in risk estimator is a weighted sum of the loss, and the summation is taken over the multi-index, i, with d elements, each running from 1 to n. During the summation, different pseudo-data points, denoted by bold zi, are input into the loss function. Please see the example at the bottom. Let's say the training data consists of three data points, z1 to z3. Then, the pseudo-data point, bold z112, 
is obtained by collecting the first and second elements from Z1, and the last element from Z2. The proposed risk estimator, can be computed by generating all such pseudo data points for all combinations of the indices. After obtaining the augmented data set and the instance weights, we can simply train a predictor using them, by any supervised learning method as long as it supports instance weighted learning. This procedure, actually, coincides with the initial data augmentation idea that was described in the trivariate example in the earlier slide. From theoretical perspectives, we investigate the question, how does the proposed method help, statistically? We derived an excess risk bound, under a key assumption that we know the correct underlying causal graph, as well as some more technical smoothness and boundedness assumptions. The bound has three parts, namely the bias term, the complexity term, and the uncertainty term. The bias term stems from the kernel approximation used in the proposed method, and the complexity terms are the interesting part here. The complexity terms are based on the Rademacher complexity, and they show better dependencies on the sample size, compared to the usual Rademacher complexity appearing in the theoretical guarantee for the usual empirical risk minimization. Intuitively, the better dependency on the sample size can be understood as follows. The proposed method increases the number of data points, which makes it more difficult for the model to overfit to the data, effectively reducing the apparent complexity of the predictor's model class. We provide a formal assessment of this point in the paper. In summary, the theoretical analysis implies that the proposed method has a complexity reduction effect, which mitigates overfitting, but at the cost of introducing the bias due to the kernel approximation. Therefore, the question is, is this complexity reduction effect worth the extra bias in practice? The answer turns out to be yes, especially in the small data regime and when we have access to the causal graphs based on the domain knowledge. In this experiment, we compared the performance of the proposed method to that of the usual supervised learning, using the same hypothesis class and the same learning procedure, except that we use the augmented data and instance weights for the proposed method. To see the performance difference in relation to the sample size, we varied the size of the training data used for the learning, which is shown by the horizontal axis. The vertical axis shows the mean squared error of the predictions. Two of the data sets, A and B in the top row, are accompanied by the causal graphs obtained from domain knowledge, and for the other data sets, we applied a causal discovery method to the entire data in order to obtain the estimated causal graph. As we can see, the performance improvement is indeed observed, especially in the small data regime and when the causal graphs obtained from domain knowledge are available. Thank you for watching.